Hi, I'm Lou Tepper, uh, the linebacker coach and defensive coordinator at the University of Buffalo. From my earliest recollections, uh, I, I had a great time with my dad uh, uh, playing football. I actually went out for midget football back then and in those days and uh, fell in love with it. And, and uh, what transpired, my dad had an eighth grade education. Uh, there had only been one person in our community who had ever gone to college, and he simply said, uh, if you don't bring home a 3.0 or better, uh, you're not going to play the game. And uh, it, he used football as a tool to inspire me to be a good student. Um, I was blessed enough. I had four people recruit me, and, uh, and one of them offered me a scholarship, and, and, uh, and that changed my life. And so since then, uh, that has been very meaningful for me because football is a tool that can be used uh, to really uh, bring out the behavior that we would like to have from our uh, sons and daughters um, uh, using sport uh, because it's something that young men care so much about. Well, I, I played at Rutgers, and when I was done, um, uh, a coach by the name of Dewey King, who is in his late 80s now, um, and he has been uh, foundational for me, um, second to my father, and um, uh, has just helped me through almost every major decision I've made. And he suggested that I become a graduate assistant, which I really hadn't heard of. And he personally called uh, the University of Pittsburgh, um, UCLA, and Indiana. Those are the three schools I applied to. I was admitted to all three. Um, because of Karen, I chose Pittsburgh because it was close to her. Meanwhile, the other two played in the Rose Bowl. <laughs> and we won't win a nine. Uh, and so uh, that was kind of my start. But I, I loved it from the very beginning. Uh, this will be my 48th year in college coaching, and, and I have been blessed with health and a passion to do what I do. You know, everybody thinks of game day, and, and that's really exciting. It's exhilarating. But, but I want to tell you, meeting in my room with my 10 linebackers uh, and then being able to practice with them on the field is really the highlight of, of, uh, of my time, getting to know those guys uh, so well. And I, and I would say to you that today, I, in fact, I just talked to Coach Quinn about it today. I don't know in all of my years that I have had a room that has the quality of people in it that I have today. I, I don't have a jerk in my room. Uh, and uh, they, they, are, they work so well together, they love each other, there's such a bond there that while we may not have a Khalil Mack this year uh, in terms of a first round draft choice, uh, we're, we're going to have a lot of good players because they're dependable, they play hard, and they, and they love each other. Uh, and I tell you, I, I say this humbly, I'm, I'm really blessed, uh, and, and I know a lot of people a lot of people think it's me, and I'm just telling you, <laughs> God has given me some really great players. But, um, you know, a little, <clears throat> little William and Mary, I, I was with Jim Root, the head coach, for 10 years. Uh, we had four NFL players uh, there. Uh, we had Jim Ryan, who was in, the, uh, in two Super Bowls with, uh, with Denver, made it as a, as a uh, walk-on. We had a draft choice, Craig McCurdy. Uh, but we had, we had some young players uh, at a smaller division who really did well. Uh, then I went to Virginia Tech, and uh, we had Robert Brown, who was a third-round draft choice, played 10 years with the Packers. But, but I'll tell you, we had, a, we had two freshmen come in uh, who started as freshmen. One was Mike Johnson, who was a first-round draft choice, played 10 years with Cleveland. And uh, he started his first college game at 16 years old, architecture major. Uh, reminds me a little bit of Jared Franklin uh, here. And uh, he, he played his first NFL game when he was 20. Um, and then we had another guy, the smallest linebacker I ever had, actually, was 183 pounds and started for us at Virginia Tech as a freshman and four years later was drafted. Um, and nobody would have expected that from a guy that, that size. Uh, I went to the University of Colorado with Bill McCartney, and, um, and we had some tremendous linebackers. Alfred Williams was my first Butkus Award winner, was a first-round draft choice, played the, the rush position where Mac, Mac played, 
and Canavis McGee was a second round draft choice that was uh, a really fine uh, outside linebacker force. Uh, well, I was a head coach for 16 years, and um, I was at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. I was uh, 66 years old. I thought that was where I was going to end my career. I, I certainly enjoyed it there. I was happy there. Um, I was made some promises by the president uh, that kept me there. I had a, actually had a Big 12 defensive coordinator's job offered to me for almost three times the salary. And uh, unfortunately, after one year, he left. And the next person in charge decided that those promises didn't mean anything. Uh, they weren't written on paper, so marched us back. That, this person just said, I don't think we can work together. And I said, you're right. Well, when you're 66 years old and you don't have a job, um, I, I understand that. Uh, I, I understand age discrimination, but I also think I would have a hard time hiring a guy who was 66 uh, at the time. And so Karen and I went through 13 and a half months and not a nibble. And uh, I got to the National Convention, make a long story short, I got to talk with Jeff. Jeff seemed very interested. Uh, he said, Tep, let me ask you, how old are you? And I said, Jeff, this is a deal breaker. That's exactly what I told him. But I said, I'm telling you this, I'll spot you 10 and beat you 15 in racquetball. <laughs> and that kind of broke the ice. And uh, he invited me in and the rest is history. And I, and I, I can tell you that uh, I'm very loyal to him. I'm very loyal to UB. Um, every day I have, uh, I'm excited about uh, I'm not looking to leave. I want to be here, uh, and I have great loyalty to him and, and to this program. This, these, uh, going on my third season here, have been, and, and I've, trust me, I've been places where we've won more games, uh, but they have been three of the most special years of my career. Well, in terms of, of recruits for a program, just specifically about, um, about a linebacker, who wants to come to our program? Uh, I, I think linebackers here will be will be treated like men. They, they are. It, it's amazing that the linebacker culture across the country is probably filled with expletives. Uh, people feel like that's just part of what we have to do to get them ready. Uh, and I've got well over 20 NFL linebackers who have never heard a curse word. Uh, but I'm I'm very demanding. I want things done a special way. Uh, I want it done exactly as we ask them to do. And if they don't do something right, rather than uh, going on a tirade and embarrassing them in front of their teammates and cursing at them, I simply tell them, that's not like you. Do it again. And that's what Dewey King did with me back in 1963. And what it said to me was, hey, Tep, you're here. That's not like you. I, I see you here. And what it did to me was simply said, man, this guy cares about me. He sees me in a better light, and I want to place him. I want to get there. Um, and so doing it over and over again isn't an issue. And, and to me, that's the philosophy that, uh, that we have. I, I think, and I, and I know there are a lot of places you can go and get trained, but I will say this. I don't think you'll be trained better anywhere as a linebacker than you'll be trained here. Uh, and I think you'll get into a culture uh, where your peers really love you, uh, your peers will embrace you, um, there's not antagonism uh, between us.